The falsification of records in America is something that many people get concerned about when they're job hunting. The job hunt is about having proper records. A man's proper records are related not to his high school days, especially when he's an old man going for a new job, and it's not really even related to his college days because people go on from college and don't always use their, well, field of study. They don't always utilize that every day. There are other people that find different and more creative ways to use those underlying studies. Some people do go on to master's degree and other people might start them and then don't share them. You see, how we build our resume is based on what's vitally important to the industries and professions that we're trying to enter within or the people that we're trying to impress. The truth is a person's curriculum vitae is not the same as a resume. A curriculum vitae is something that gives the long history of a person's life in the world of work and that takes you all the way back to age maybe 12, 13, 14, 15, whenever the hell you started working. I mean there are people out there especially if they're just out of college that might put down I was a babysitter for this family for five years or whatever because they need that. But a person who's been in the professional marketplace running a business, doing a scene, etc. isn't going to do that. They're going to be very short in their summary of what they've done. Yeah, it's true that people in HR can reevaluate re or, or assess things, but the truth is most HR directors and recruiters don't really understand what their actual department heads are looking for in bringing in a person to the job. And because of that, we often have a lot of attrition in the world. Retention becomes really challenging for corporations because they have not really assessed and written the appropriate job description for what is actually needed. It's not really always the strength of an HR director to be able to do that. Sometimes they have an associate that works under them that's much better at doing that, but in truth a standardized job description doesn't always apply to someone who doesn't have a job description. And there are some companies, actually many across America, that have not written a job description for their own self if they're an independent business owner, or let alone for any employee they might hire. And that is a travesty of, well, responsibility and, frankly, accountability to America. You see, how a person behaves on the job makes a statement to everyone in a community of what that company is about. And when employees misbehave and are improper with time and improper for, for consumer time, people get pretty upset. You can stand in the line of a very social cashier and enjoy talking with her when you're the one that's being talked to. But if you're in the line waiting to go through the line, you can have a highly social employee that is just pissing you off because you're going to be late to getting back from lunch. So we have to really find out the, the appropriate time to be, to be social and salacious in terms of being a soliciting employee trying to gather information. But the truth is, most employees are just curious, and they have no lawful right under a legal de uh, job description to be social at all. You see, people's time is the most valuable thing that we give to other people. And when we abuse people's time by investing in building relationships, and then we walk away by saying, talk to the hand, or you're not welcome here, it is a total form of discrimination.